And that was an attempt to type as fast as I could. I think I made a few errors, but I don't think it is that bad. Um, let me just uh, introduce you to this beautiful 1964 um, Speedwriter Cavalier typewriter. This typewriter I received a couple days ago. I responded to a Craigslist advertisement in Vancouver, uh, where I don't live very much near. I think it's about uh, 50 kilometers by ferry, or no, not even 30 kilometers by ferry, because I live on an island. Um, but my aunt lives um, near Vancouver. Anyway, I responded to it. This typewriter was advertised as non-working. There was a space bar problem. Uh, I'm just quoting that from the advertisement. And it was originally meant to be sold at a garage sale, but it was never picked up. Uh, it was only $10, but people don't want broken typewriters, clearly. Um, so I responded. Um, she said, she informed me of the space bar problem, which I said was fine. Um, and then I got an email saying that um, she said she was in a hurry and that she didn't want any money for it. She would leave it behind her house in a black garbage bag and she wouldn't be there um, for my aunt to pick it up. So um, my aunt went there uh, and found the typewriter in the black garbage bag uh, at the completely empty house. It was She didn't live there anymore. Apparently she moved out just a few hours before and the typewriter was all that was left. Um, so that was very funny for her to come across. There was a note on there saying it was for me. She took it and then when she came to visit a couple days ago she brought it with her. And here it is. Uh, the typewriter came with uh, its original case which I have here and I have a few more more things that it came with. Um, there we go. First of all, the f interesting thing is that it came with the original, um, what do you call it? The, the, the foam, the foam uh, protectors for the side. These are the original from the factory. I love this very much. They, as you can see, um, this one goes, I think it was on this side. No, this one goes on this side. As you can see, um, the carriage should move over a little bit more, like this. Fits like a glove on that side, and this one goes over here. I think this is right, yeah. See, so that's the protectors. The protectors. I'm a little tired, I have trouble speaking English, I do apologize in advance. Um, the typewriter had um, page 16 of the instruction manual, which indicates uh, how to install the ribbon, which I know by head. Um, this is a un this is a, the guarantee that was never filled out. Um, so, as you can see, and it had a test paper from the store, the original test paper from the store, and um, which is pretty cool. You can see the sample. Somebody wrote, "You are a skunk" on it, which is very nice. Um, scientifically you can customer test sheet you can see so that was very nice and then of course I got the cleaning kit with it which I didn't have with my other speed rider so that's very nice uh, cleaning cloth doesn't smell like it's been used or barely you can see maybe it's staying yeah, a few times um, here is the brush brushes. I have. Um, there's supposed to be three. Unfortunately, I only have two of them, but I can't complain. Very messy eraser in the box, as you can see. Oh well, at least I have it, right? <laughs> um, and I have the key to the case, which works fine. So that was a lucky break for me, and I got the whole thing for nothing. I paid my aunt a little bit of money for the gas and the time, of course, but you know, it's the tire part itself I got for nothing. So that was a really nice score, and I'm very happy with it. Um, and the reason why, I'll tell you, let me just put this away. Because I want to explain a little bit. 
So this typewriter, the Speedwriter, is a rebrand of console, just like Commodore and um, just like uh, Norwood, and I think there's another one. The, these are all rebrands of console. Console um, made our Czechoslovakian typewriters. And they were rebranded and sold in the US and in Canada. In Canada they were called Commodores and in the US they were called Speedwriters. And I think Norwood was Australian. Anyways, this will be called the, if it was a console, the Console 224. As with that one. Um, you can also tell this by the serial number, which is underneath there. Um, you can see the 224. And that four means the year, by the way. Um, and that's the serial number, which is 84292. So this is a console 224 rebrands. And in this case, a Speedwriter Cavalier. Um, the difference between my latest, uh, well, my newest uh, Speedwriter and that one is that one uh, lacks features. This is the Speedwriter Collagina that I picked up at Valley Village, I think now about a year and a half ago. As you can tell, it doesn't have a tabulator. You see it lacks a switch and a key. Uh, and it doesn't have a paper bail or paper support. This one does. As you can see, here's the tabulator. There's the tab clear and set key. There is a all clear key, all set key, clear key. I hope I make sense, I'm having trouble speaking out here, I'm sorry. Um, I do have that from time to time. When I get tired, my English becomes a little bad, so uh, do bear with me. Here is the paper support, as you can see. Very nice. Um, the reason why I wanted this machine is because, first of all, I prefer Commodores or any rebrand of that. I don't. I'm here, I currently live in Canada, so I think of Commodores as the 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 brand the main brand but it isn't of course but I prefer those models um, and if I can choose between those I would prefer the older model the newer models are nice but they have a little bit of a wooden feel which these machines don't have now the difference you know it's I I think it's because these are older and they seem to have a little bit more of a structure. Um, this one is even older than that one, you can tell by the old style carriage return lever, which runs curved here, straight here, and then curved, while if you look at this one, it's curved all around. Now, older Commodores also have this instead of that, so you can tell this one is slightly older than that one, and if we look at the serial number, that also tells me, of course. Um, right, now... Um, what I was going to say is these are very nice machines, but unfortunately, because that one didn't have a tabulator key, it wasn't very logical to use this one for longer drafts and story writing, which I do with these machines. So I wanted one with a tabulator, and I happened, like I told earlier, to run across this one on Craigslist. Um, yeah, so I, I when I got it, the spacebar indeed wasn't working, the draw band had broken. Which I fixed, as you can tell. I fixed that. Um, there was another problem, which was I already saw in the photograph that the Y was slightly sagging, like this. Without my finger on it, of course. Uh, I thought it was stickiness, but when I got it, it turned out that, if I take the cover off, the spring that pulls it back down, which is that one, if it lets me zoom in. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have known that happened. The one in the center screen, that one. Um, that one uh, was dis disconnected, so the key wouldn't return to its original spot or had very much difficulty doing so. Um, so, but I happened to find the original spring dangling underneath it, which was a break. So I fixed that. I fixed the the the, the, um, the draw belt. The draw band. Um, then I took off the carriage, which is literally just by releasing that lever and that lever over there, and it pops right off. No screws have to be undone. Um, so 
started cleaning the machine. I discovered this machine does have a bit of rust. Seemed to be common with these Commodore or console machines. Um, I don't have a single console rebrand or otherwise machine that doesn't have a spot of rust. This one, however, is a little worse than the others. As you can probably tell, um, that's rust. Uh, it's uh, mostly removed over there. And over here, I gave it a vinegar treatment, the whole machine. So I took the body panels off, the carriage off, and everything that could be done with vinegar to old metals. I gave a vinegar bath, um, which d neutralizes rust. Uh, so it's still there, but it won't develop anymore. There is a little bit of rust underneath the carriage, but it seems to be all paneling and framework that has the rust. And it's really not that bad. Um, it is only cosmetic and very little at that, so nothing to complain about. I bought this machine so I could write on it, and that's what I'm going to do with it. Um, okay, let's see if I can think of something else to talk about here. As I mentioned, so I said the drawback was broken. Oh yes, um, the shift had a problem where it would stick down slightly, like you shift it, and it would come back up, but not all the way. So you would shift. And the shifted letter, the capital letter, would be uh, aligned properly, but the letter after that, even if you just left it and then typed, would slight, be slightly unaligned, and then the shift basket would move up. So um, it turned out that the springs for that needed some slight adjusting, which is literally um, turning that screw and turning that screw uh, to the right and tightening the spring, and that seemed to fix the problem very well. Then the final problem, it, it, I realized this machine had a lot of problems, but I cannot complain for a machine that I got for free. The last problem that it had was um, the machine at some point has been sitting on something warm or even hot at one, um, which caused the back feet literally to melt. Uh, one foot, one of the feet was literally turned into wax, like it looked like a candle had melted into the machine, as you can see there's still some there. I cannot get that out, It's I think it's been there for years and years. The other one, well, it totally disintegrated. These are the front feet, by the way, which are good, I mean, they're a little cracked, but they're very flexible, they're very rubbery still, as you can see. So these are still good, I'm keeping these. The reason why I kept these is I wanted to show you what had happened to the rear feet when I got it. Now, the one that you see in there is one foot. So this is one foot. These little pieces in there, that was the other, the melted one. I literally scraped that off it. Um, there's no other damage to the machine I could see, so I wonder what happened to it. It's an interesting factor to look at. Anyways, uh, I went to Canadian Tire and for four dollars I bought what they called rubber bumpers, which is literally uh, four feet, I think they use for cabinets and chairs, something like that. But they're excellent for typewriters, as you can clearly see. Uh, they're the same height, the screws in fit in perfectly, and they hold, they're very sturdy. Um, yeah, that was a very good score. I was very happy that worked out so well. They're very rubbery, they keep the machine on the, type, on, on the table very well. Um, so yeah, that was a good score. This is the underside, by the way. You can see between the keys that there's still some uh, rust on the guide bar or the guide plate. Many different terms are used for this. But it's all done, uh, treat, treated with vinegar, so that worked out well. Um, okay, the only thing that I'm still working on right now is there is a bit of a clutch system for the um, tabulator that's worn out and there's a system that pushes against the plate in order for the carriage not to slam to the left when you press the tabulator but the thing is it's all pressed together and that's all pressing against the bar which makes it incredibly tight and very uh, difficult to tab well, okay, so it works when you... So, okay this is not a very good example Sometimes when you click the tab, the carriage won't move and you have to release the tab slightly and then it will move over. I'm working on fixing this. 
Um, it's a little bit of a nuisance now, but that's something that's progress. It's very easy to repair. I think I need some new um, a material for that to rub against the bar in order to work it, have it work properly. But that's something for later. Uh, besides that, there is no rust on the inside over here. Um, new ribbon from Staples, as you can clearly see. It's uh, not used at all. Uh, the keys are a little bit dirty from me using it. Um, but beside that, uh, I've worked very hard on cleaning this machine. And I think it came up very nice. So, yeah, the back plate has the Commodore franchise sticker on it because, after all, it was sold in Canada. In this case, Scarborough, Ontario. I don't know if that pronounced that right, but there it is. This is, again, I'm going to uh, brag a little bit about this. These are wonderful machines, and I definitely advise them to any writer. Uh, they're a little bit forgotten about their... Uh, overshadowed maybe by the Olympia SM9 uh, typewriters but these shouldn't be forgotten these are wonderful machines to use um, maybe a little bit cheaper than the Olympias but they feel terrific and they last a very long time so um, yes that's my advice this is the video concerning this typewriter um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you stay tuned for any more videos um, thank you very much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.